Functional programming, in the sense of avoiding state, can be data type oriented or object oriented, depending on whether we want to make it easier to add new operations or add new variants. And if we're in a language that has functions values, in that sense a functional program, we can use functions to represent objects. For example, when we have a shape object, if the only operation we care about for shapes is the area operation, then we can just say that every shape is a function that when you call it gives the area back. And if we do that, then we can make a rectangle constructor that returns a shape, where our constructor is just a, a regular plate function. It takes the width and height, and it returns a shape in the sense that it returns a function that takes no arguments, and returns the area of the rectangle. Here's the square constructor that takes a side and returns a function that produces the area of the square um, by multiplying the sides. So if r is constructed as a rectangle with, uh, with width and height of 10 and 15, then to get the area of that object, we call it as a function and we get the 150 back. And we could define s as a square uh, that has side length 9, so when we call s as a function, then we will get back 81. If we want a circle, we could make an immediate circle object because any object that's a shape is a function that takes no arguments and returns the area of the circle. Let's say this particular circle has a radius 2, so its area is pi 2 squared. If we call c in the same way that we called r and s, then we will get that area back. This is an immediate object, but if we want to make a lot of circles, then we could make a circle constructor that takes a radius as some number and gives us back a shape by multiplying three point by making a function rather that returns 3.4 times the radius squared and now I can make C be a circle with radius 2 and it works the same as it did before <laughs>